all. And and the comment was made, okay, we got it, we love it. So it shows what it can do. Um, so I don't think that you have to do too much to um, impress the commissioners as far as how five your city plus is. I just want to know what this site can do for our citizens. Certainly, certainly. Great, great. I appreciate it. Well, we're going to do just that. What we're going to do is uh, we're just going to look at just two or three quick slides to tell you what we do. Um, not to impress you, just to show you what we do, which is uh, therefore what we're going to do after is look at some of those sites in the state of Georgia um, and show you those specific things that you want to look at as far as functionality goes, okay? So I think we'll accomplish that in the uh, 30 minutes that you have. So that said, I'm Bill Frankel, I'm senior, senior regional manager for Civic Club. I'm based in Charleston, South Carolina, not too far from you all. So, um, and Harlan Bryan is our senior um, sales engineer, and he is based in our corporate office in Manhattan, Kansas. Harlan, say hello. Good morning, everybody. Hi. Good morning. Glad to be here. Harlan, Harlan was also a trainer with Civic Plus for uh, seven years, and he has got a tremendous amount of uh, experience in regards to our system because he's gone on site training. So, you've got the first people with you today. Um, so let's get this off quickly. I know you're short on time, and we'll move right through this. Uh, let's uh, move to the first slide, please. Um, for those of you who have viewed Civic Plus on our website or have an idea, um, we are in 50 states, and we've got over 1,600 clients uh, in the past 14 years. That'll give you a good idea of the diversification throughout the country uh, based in, uh, in associations, cities, counties. And we also work in the state markets as well. Okay, next please. I think the important thing is not only seeing what we do, but understanding what we do. Okay, and we are an engagement solution for government. Um, we engage your citizens and we engage uh, all the community and people that are coming to your county. And we allow them to transact um, we have a large portal for you, uh, and that's what you have to keep in mind where you can also transact business uh, online, which in essence allows you to keep your uh, total cost of ownership down and, and gain return on investment as people are paying for different activities and reserving different facilities online. Um, it also creates a window to your citizens, to the world, in regards to what you do in your county, what you look like in your county at your front porch. And uh, most importantly, which Harlan and I are going to show you, is how do you engage those citizens? How do you notify them? Um, so they can sign up for events and they can uh, respond back to them. It's a two-way constant messaging system. And uh, we're going to show you that today. Thank you. Next. Simply put, we're an end-to-end -end solution. We build it, we design it, we run it, we support it, okay? And along the way, you have these four areas that we focus on. Project management, uh, from the inception of the implementation through the design phase up front, which is initial. We have close to 10 designers. We work with you directly uh, to capture your community and the look and feel of what's important to you. Um, and then content is very important. We work with you to develop it. And we do a lot of training, and Harlan certainly can, can speak to that um, as we move forward, because he's done it for many years. Next. The other thing that's important, what happens once you need to go out to go live? Um, well, we have people who support you. You have to have support. You can get on the phone and speak to somebody, or you can go online and look at Civic Plus University. We have manuals. Um, you can also certify the people that are going to be administrators on your site. And I think another thing that's very important is we constantly update, upgrade, and enhance our product on a bi-weekly basis, and we roll out um, major modules throughout the course of the year. So you never have to worry about yourselves being on the cutting edge of what you need to have for government and, and your site. And also, we offer redesigns every four years. So you don't have to worry about the look and feel of the <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> you want to focus? 
All right, um, short and to the point, any quick questions, then we're gonna jump into uh, show you how some of the uh, cities and counties in the state of Georgia um, use our solution um, to benefit um, themselves and their citizens and their constituents. So that said, um, Harlan, I'm gonna just pass it over to you. Um, Paige, any quick questions before we jump into this from anyone? Just one from Commissioner Howell. Is this a scalable development? Hey, hey, Commissioner, is, I'm sorry. Hey, I'm Commissioner okay. Powell. Is this a scalable development program that, that do you start out with X number of modules and you add to it or is it boom, it's all there and you grow grow each module? We, we have everything, we, this is our product, we built it, um, and everything comes within the uh, to use as far as possible, you know, that's in the earth. We, we're listening uh, our a full yeah. solution. Okay, okay. You get it all in one so package. I'm sorry? You get it all in one package to begin with, or yes, you just ask it, can you build on it? Uh, what we do is we enhance it and we roll out new products um, year in and year out. So we can we constantly do that for you. Okay, I'm good. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, Paige? I don't think so. I think we're ready to move forward just to, to make a point. As you're moving forward through this, I know one of Commissioner Powell's other questions earlier when we were talking about this was the availability of an app for that. And I know that that was something I was very excited as we were moving through the presentation that we had before with you all. If you'll just remind us as we move through the process that you know, there are some smartphone applications that will also address some of these functionalities. We will talk about that. We have full mobile capabilities for all types of devices, tablets, and phones. So um, that is uh, for sure. Um, okay, let's just move through this. And I do encourage every all the commissioners, if you have questions along the way, you can just stop us in midstream and fire away with those questions as opposed to waiting to the end. Either way is fine by us. Thank you. Great. Harlan. All right. Good morning, everybody. So I want to make sure I don't fit to talking about the apps. So we've got uh, we've got some very Civic Plus apps that we'll talk about. Um, like I said, I've, I've been working out, Bill said that I've been working for the company for the past seven years and I've been uh, training people just like yourselves who are working with a website and who are trying to get information out to the public. And I just really want to just highlight a couple of quick things for you and if you have questions, please feel free to interrupt. Uh, I, was a, I was a school teacher for a number of years. I do have that habit of blanking this out of my voice. So uh, please, uh, please interrupt as, as much as you need. Uh, a lot of what we are seeing in trends with government websites and a lot of what our clients are doing more specifically is we are trying to make it easy for folks to find what it is they need to find. We're not we're not dumbing down the website, we're just clarifying it. We're making it we're making it more convenient for the site visitors so that they can find what it is that they're looking for. If they can't find it on a website, they're going to call in. They're going to bother the staff. I, I, and I know it's not it's not a bother to to be in, in service organization, but your your department folks, your employees, they have a ton of stuff to do anyway. So we want to help make them more efficient, but we also want to help your citizens become more efficient too. So that when they when they're better educated, when they know which department does what when they find out the right process, then they know specifically who it is they need to go to because not everybody knows what everybody does. Um, and we want to make sure that that makes sense. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes. Okay, great. So that's why with uh, Charlton County, uh, we, you know, we, their drop downs were visiting, business, government, services, and how do I? And I love this how do I because this really is, you're reading the site visitor's mind. You're helping them find exactly what they need to find as far as they're doing. So again, the, the governments are there, the departments are in there. The services really take you to where you need to go because those are the things that people are looking for. And then the how do I, how do I is done here. So it's a matter of being able to find that information. A long time ago, there was a report done about internet traffic, and they said if you don't find what you're looking for within three clicks, 
you're not going to. Newer updates to that study say that as long as people think they're on the right path, they'll keep going, but it sure helps if it's within three clicks. So we haven't even clicked once to find specific information that they're looking for. So this is what we're trying to do at State Plus. We're trying to make government employees' jobs easier, trying to make it better, trying to make them more efficient so that it, it helps them do their jobs. So that's and Har Harlan, I want to just jump in here quickly for a second, please. Um, I, I just want to make sure we've got about 15 minutes. Um, we've got a very short window, so uh, okay. I just wanted to remind everyone here. And if you folks feel uh, you want to take a couple extra minutes, certainly that's, that's great and up to you, but I just want to make sure we're on task as far as time goes. Thank you. Thanks for that reminder, Bill. Okay, so let's talk about how we get the information out to the public. A lot of it is done automatically through uh, different modules, uh, news and announcements. When you create a new news story, when you create a new uh, uh, announcement, it's automatically pushed out through email. It's automatically pushed out through a text message. It's already sent out through social media. When you add announcements to it, when you do calendars, it's already going through what it needs to do. Uh, let me take you real quickly to Lilburn, Georgia. They do the same thing with their navigation. They've got their government here. Uh, they've got all of their, their specifics, even have their departments, but they're still listed underneath the government. And then it's our community city services doing business and then a nice big bank of it. Uh, one of the things with, uh, with their request is that they use a lot of things in here that make it easy for folks to find out how to get updates. So this notifications, will take you to another module of ours called Notify. These are the things that people can subscribe to from the website. You can have an own, your own newsletter, you can send out emergency road closures, post new bids, post new jobs, here's a calendar, here's public meetings, here's, here's agendas and minutes. If you guys want to post your agendas and minutes online, uh, there's an easy way to do that right here. So this is a simple, easy way for folks to get that information. Harlan, can, that, I, can well, I interrupt you just for a second? Um, because go I, right I do know that Commissioner Powell had a concern about this during an earlier meeting that we had. We also have an intranet um, capability with this site that will allow us to alert our employees in the same fashion on information that would benefit them as well. Is that correct? Absolutely. Any part of the functionality that's on the front part of the website can also be used in an intranet. So you can have the same, you can have a calendar, you can have employee calendar, you can have employee news and alerts. Um, you can even have employee request tracker where it's a, it's an online ticketing system, more or less with, uh, with another department. Okay. So absolutely you can do that. Good deal, thank you. And, and, and Paige, also, I just want to reiterate from our meeting on January 23rd that we initially had, I know it's important for you as far as notifications that there are, there are eight ways that notifications can go out, right. correct? That is correct. Okay, and Harlan, I, I know you that you're looking at that right now. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think he's hitting that yeah. because, you know, not all of our citizens receive or prefer to see, receive information the same way. Some of them would say, send me all you got and I may get one of them or I'll catch one of them. You know, some people only like email. Some people only like a text message. What's right. most important right. to me, though, is that right now we don't have this capability at all, and we're not right. putting our best foot forward as far as citizen engagement and communication goes, and this, this really helps us with one solution with that. Absolutely. It's one-stop one shopping here. Because not, not only that, but it also pushes to Facebook and Twitter or you know, Pinterest or YouTube. I mean, so there's lots of different ways that we can we can get that connected with you. It's just a matter of how do you want to, how do you want to reach your audience. Okay, let's move on to another feature. Great. Okay. So um, let's let's talk about uh, the request tracker real quick. Uh, request tracker is our tracking system. I, I mentioned just a little bit. What request tracker does is it uses an online form. They will fill out whatever it is that they're looking for, and then it gets submitted. The site visitor who fills this out, they have to log in under a username and password, and then we send them emails back and forth, letting them know the process, the status, however you want to do this. It's easy for the folks on the back end of the website to do it because it's all tied together. It's one system. When you post it, it sends them the email. Um, the, the, the recipient, the, 
person who filled out the form, they get that email, they can log back in, they can log in and see the status, it's all right. Uh, there's reporting with this, there's Google mapping with it, it's, it's really easy to use. Questions? I don't think so. Thank you. Okay, real quick, I wanted to talk about ePay. Uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of our folks are using different services for ePay. We do have an ePay module. We can, uh, a lot of times we can link that to your financial software. We'll help you set up the forms. We'll help everything get set up. If you have an external provider, we'll put a link on the page. Just as long as, this is one of the number one things that people are coming to the website for. They want to be able to find information on how to pay their bills online, they want to turn in a request and they want to keep up to they want to keep up to date with news and announcements and calendar events. We want to make sure that they are. And so that's and go back on go back on your ePay for a minute. You're not you you can hit multiple like if it's a new business, like if it's a water bill, like if it's a fine or tickets or is that on and on and on and on? A absolutely. Here, Morgan County, Georgia, they wanted to make that a, a, a big button just like Lilburn did. Uh, and it, it takes them to where they make their email. Oh, there you go. Don't have any items. So they figure out a way to get that set up in there so that it's all taken care of. Uh, here's Norcross. Here's their online payments. It, it's, it's great to say, you know, pay utility bills, pay citations. There you go. And you direct them exactly where you want them to see. They're using common technologies here again. Uh, here's their citation stuff. So it doesn't matter if you use our stuff or not. We just want to make sure that that functionality is there. It would be great if it were on our sites. So that way, when you when you go to a page, that it takes you straight there. Um, but at, at least at least they're getting that option in there to make that page. That's great. That's the goal. That's great. Yeah. And, and, and I think another thing that's important. You know, as far as payments online goes, I mean, it's going to drive efficiency. So it's going to lower your cost if you're still pushing paper out. It's going to lower your cost, okay? Not only is it going to lower your cost, but another thing you have to take into account is it's going to drive revenue for you that people can pay online. If they can reserve facilities online, activities that they want to participate in, so they're going to engage with you in a financial matter. Okay, so not only are you going to save money, but you're going to drive additional revenue for the county, and that's critical. Harlan? Absolutely. Uh, let's say, I, I do want to talk about our apps. Um, our apps are in both Google's Play Store for Android, and they are in iTunes for iOS devices. Um, these are uh, these are our clients that are using them. The app, the, the reason to go with an app, and let me be clear about this, the, uh, the public use of the internet is moving mobile. Um, there are more people surfing the web on their mobile devices than they are on a desktop computer. The future of computing literally is in the palm of your hands. People like apps because it directs their attention. They, they can do one thing at a time versus having it on a web browser where you've got multiple tabs and you know lots of options to do. Your best mobile strategy is a, a bi-directional. You want to cover as many possible ways as you can because you want to reach the people where they are at. That's where you have you have to reach out to them with these things, provide it for them so that they can get information. The mobile app is is taken from the website. There's you don't have to update two different things. You update one website, it pushes the information out, it updates it, it's all right there. Uh, so this is a, a great way to do this. There is there is a a, a a cost for setting up the app, but these are free apps to download. So it doesn't doesn't take much to use. Okay, question on Any that. Any questions about? Yeah, question yeah, on ahead. that. If 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 I'm a citizen riding down the road, there's a big pothole. I bring my smartphone out. I take a picture. Does does yeah. the app automatically send it in with a uh, with a uh, a GIS or identifying location data on it uh, from the picture and go directly to the public works department or if a tree's down or yada 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 sort of stuff. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, the uh, the the images are taken from from their phone. They can be uploaded with the app with the request itself. They can fill it out because when they get to request tracker, they're using they're using the same functionality that's in the website. Okay. Questions? Okay. Okay. 
what do you guys want to talk about next? Because I do want to, before our time runs out, hit a little bit on the value of this as it relates to emergencies. And I see that's where you're headed. Um, right, exactly. Yeah. 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 So I, I, I really wanted to talk about this emergency alert. Uh, but I, do, do we have time? Can I, can I get a volunteer? Yeah, we've got it. Yeah, we have time. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm going to give control. Paige, are you are you at the computer? I'm, I'm not. We're actually across the room. How about you just oh. take control and we'll, we'll Okay. Watch. Well, I was gonna, I was going to say I can I can have you guys do it so you can see firsthand how, how easy it is to do. Uh, but I was going to talk about this emergency alert um, because and and how the alerts get sent out and how easy it is to update. This is one of our modules. Uh, and by the way, here's our list of modules. So this is everything you get with the Plus website. Uh, weird, this is a module called the Alert Center. So I'm going to go over here to the Alert Center. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to add an, an alert. So here's, here are the alerts, it's the alert category. Here's my boil order in effect for the remainder of the day. Well here, I need to just update that alert. All I have to do is click it, add an update, and type up my update. So boil or alert. Oil order uh, alert has been canceled. Okay, I can put in a link. I can put in a link. I can put in display text, and I can hit save and send. When I save and send this, the email will get sent out with the update and the link to the website. It gets pushed out eight different ways. So this is like we were talking about with the notification. When I hit save and send. The update will be posted on the website. It will be posted on the, the mobile version of the website. We haven't even gotten into that. It will be posted on the app. So if they have downloaded the app, they'll get an alert right on their lock screen. Just like you get for your calendar events. Just like you get for Amber Alerts. Just like you get on, you know, on lots of different things on there. So it gets, it's, on the, it's on the desktop, it's on the mobile, it's on the, yeah, the mobile app. It gets pushed out through Facebook. It gets pushed out through Twitter through what's called an RSS feed. Um, they will get an email. They will get a text message. So there's eight different ways that folks will, will get that set up. So it's an easy way to get that done. Um, when you're creating an alert, a title, a description, uh, you can turn the big black alert bar on all pages or just the home page only. If it's a big major alert, please put it on all pages. You never know when people are going to have bookmarked another page. Uh, you can add, upload an image. Um, here in Kansas, when we have a tornado alert, everybody doesn't head to the shelter without stopping and taking the picture first. Um, so you can add your picture in there. You can put in links. You can put in multiple links. You can put in as many links as you want. The alert is date and time sensitive. So if it's just a warning or a watch, you can say the watch ends at 2 o'clock. When you hit that save and send, it goes out those eight different ways. Any questions? Is this trigger code red or is that still separate? It's, it's still separate. There's some of the features that Code Red has. Um, we have not had time for Ashley to take a look at the site. We're going we're gonna to get Bill and Harlan and Ashley together to see where we are with that. Um, many of our citizens, because of their technology um, environment, still need that phone call. So we don't want to not have that available for them, especially with our elderly population, with our, our, um, our special needs citizens, things like that. Um, one thing I do want to point out that's not specifically related to this, but it is a part of it, is that the sunset feature that he just showed is that we can take information regardless of what it is and be able to you know, even put it in weeks in advance and put the date that we want that information to go up and then the date that we want that information to go down. Keeps the site refreshing itself and <coughs> thinking on its own without us having to take employee time to remember to get back to that. Um, which is especially important um, in an emergency situation because you know we may get a notification that, that this is public health's message for the next 24 hours and they need us to get that up. Well, we don't want to put it, you know, with everything else going on where we just really have to remember to, to get that up again here, take it down after 24 hours. So this takes the, the mistakes that can be made in those areas out for you. And, and also that's a great point, Dave, and also in, in other modules, it also allows you to keep um, your sites very clean and uncluttered and unconfusing um, going forward as things start to expire. 
Okay, Harlan, uh, the only thing, uh, I would, can you take a quick look at, um, on the homepage of live edit? Absolutely. And, and, and Paige, I know we're out of time. Uh, just a, a, a quick, quick finish here, um, which um, we always like to show is the simplicity of making changes and edits um, to your site. And as you may recall, uh, Paige, from our last meeting in January, let me show you that. You can do all of these changes on the front end of the site, which is really uh, an easy and efficient way to do things. How are you guys editing your website now, Paige, if I can ask? We have a really old CMS that has never worked. Um, in, in fact, we have a, a new person that's only been with the county for a few months that's in the process of maintaining that, and, and she is, um, you know, actually kind of laughs about it now because we can go in and make changes to font and information and, um, and font size and, and all those things and then go and refresh the site on the front end and it may or may not work. It may or may not, may not be what it says it's gonna be. And we have some of that functionality that over time has just quit working. And we talked to our current um, site builder that, that built the site seven years ago, and it's not something that can be fixed without a new site. It's, it's that that CMS is just outlived. It's, it's, it's usefulness and it just doesn't work anymore. Okay. Well, ho hopefully this is something that's going to help help you guys out a great deal. Uh, this is what we call live edit, um, and I've already started the process here. Live edit is you are working on the front part of the website to make edits and changes to the website. Um, so if I have a, a new test, I'm just going to call this a test page, uh, it will automatically put in the title for me. Um, it can be a link to something. Our description and keywords fields are very search engine friendly. Google loves them absolutely loves them. A, a description is a description of what you're going to find on the page complete sentences keywords what are the search terms that you think people will type in a search engine to find that page um, uh, you can hide a page from either the, the the desktop or the mobile view so that you, if you have a uh, if you want to put an airport schedule on the on the mobile view it will be much smaller than it would be the desktop view. it's up to you so i'm going to create this page and then uh, this is how we make edits and how we make changes. It's just by its point and click. We use these little things called widgets, and there are different kinds of widgets. The widget is tied to all of the modules. Um, so here, it's going to start, what are, what are the best practices pages when someone types in test page? City Council, Boards and Commissions, Council Homepage. We're going to, you can use these as templates. You can create your own templates, or we can start from a blank version. That's exactly what I want to do. So we use these little widget things that you can drag and drop onto the page to make changes and create the page. So I would start an editor page, and here's my here's my test. So I'm going to say say for example I'm going to start a new uh, a new testing department. Uh, if you're interested in the HTML, you can code HTML, but I, who wants to? I know I don't. Um, so this is a test page. This is only a test page. Okay, uh, when I've done, I click outside of it, and there's there's what my page will look like. For me, it's not live yet, but there's the page. If I need to add an image to that page, I just drop that image wherever I want onto the page, and then it will start our image manager. There is an image manager that will help you edit your images and make the right sizes and do what's going on here. Uh, see, I've got a demo here. There's our, yeah, here we go, our, governor, our Kansas Governor Brown back. Uh, we'll not use him. How about John Frazier? Uh, we can edit this picture if we need to, make sure it's the right size, make sure it's the right shape. I can upload a picture. There's public, let's see what the public works for. There we go. Lots of cool things through some of these channels. Uh, uh, let's use uh, St. Louis Arch. So I can insert that picture. It automatically drags that picture and brings it in. Uh, if it's not the right size, all I have to do is just resize it. Or if I wanted to add more to this page, I could add a calendar to it. Right. So it's drag, I think drop. We got it, no, okay. Yeah. So you need to ease of use. Um, I, do want to right. say, I do want to say one thing because the chairman is going to be ready to move on with the um, agenda here for the retreat, and we are going to have to go. And I do appreciate you all um, scheduling us and getting us in for this. And this has been great information. But I do want to get a confirmation quickly that some of our commissioners have expressed interest either in surveys or online polls or petitions or you know citizens in general being able to fill out those forms online. And I did want to verify with you that the site does have the capability.
Absolutely. Uh, that would be, it, it can be an online form without the report concern tied to it, and that's the, that's the perfect way to do that. In the back end, when they start getting submissions for those forms, you'll see them, uh, you'll see the results, you'll be able to export, you can print, do whatever you need to with those results. Okay, very good. Does anyone have any questions? All right. Okay. Any questions? I just wanted to confirm, I had asked Paige, is there an extra charge if we need more storage space for things like pictures or other documents? Well, um, I'll address that quickly. Um, we've got over 1,600 clients, and you get 20 gigs of space on your regular site and 10 gigs for your media site. And on the regular site, we've never seen anybody uh, with cities and counties that are over a million in population run out of storage space. So if, but if you needed it, it's, it's there, we can accommodate you. On the media side, you can always move your files to the uh, document center and clear out your media center. So um, there's various ways that you would go about it, but I wouldn't worry about storage at all. If, if you have to, we would certainly notify you because when you're starting to reach that limit, we, if you do start to reach that limit, we would notify you. Um, so uh, there shouldn't be a problem whatsoever. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, gentlemen, you're we're welcome. gonna we're gonna jump off and thank you again for your time. And Amanda will be in contact with you later this afternoon. Certainly the first thing. Very impressive, guys. Very good. Uh, everybody, commissioners, thank you very much for your time and, and allowing us to uh, present to you today. Have a great day and a great weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Too. Bye. 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 Probably allocate five hundred dollars a year. Yeah, what you pay for? <laughs>